Hello again, this is Lisa from Lisa Haas Custom Sewing here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're once again going to be going into our a decade of French fashion from Mary Carolyn Waldrop. I'll put the link to the Kindle book and the, uh, or to the book rather, down in the info box. Today we're going to be working on page 31 and it is this garment right here. Uh, as I mentioned before, I like these thin sheath-like dresses. It's not truly a sheath, but it is a thin tube-like dress. has a little bit of flair. Let's get into the Photoshop image that I snagged. Let's get over here. It's Photoshop. Okay. Um, first of all, I just set out some overall notations on this. It's a midi-length gourd skirt. It has a front and back skirt piece, this right here that is cut along with the yoke. So this will all be one piece right here. Uh, now the interesting thing about this is it's actually two bodice pieces. You've got this overlay which is a raglan sleeve and this can actually have some buttons along this edge right here and then the underlay is your set-in sleeve. It has in this yoke, I don't know if you can see it, let's get in here a little bit closer right here. This is going to end half of your hip drop distance. My hip drop is seven and a half. So half of that is going to be three and three quarters. So I have dropped this down to the high hip, which is three and three quarters, and I've carried that same distance up towards the bust line, three and three quarters. Yours will be different. Just remember it's half the distance of your high of your hip drop, which is going to basically indicate your high hip line. But you want to get this distance right here to here and here to here even. And then right here in the center of the front yoke, or the center, or the, yes, the front yoke, we've got this V. So this front bodice piece is going to go here, down into a V, and then this way. Now, I don't think that that's true in the back. Let's just go down a little bit. Okay, it does. In the back it has the V as well. And also your back skirt piece is cut in one with your yoke too. Now here's another interesting point. Your side skirt is also cut in one piece. The front and back sides are cut as one piece here. And you can create a side seam dart if you want to in through here. So we're going to be working on that. Uh, the skirt flare is going to start half the distance between the waistline and the skirt hem. Now I put godets in mine, or godets. I put godets in mine out of a contrasting fabric and I used a solid fabric in on the body of the dress and then a sheer, it was like a stripe almost. I think it was supposed to be a sheer curtain fabric, but I used it in my dress. And then I made the belt out of it too, just as a matching part. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Let's see what else have I not... Uh, it's got hip pockets. The gauntlets. Now they are going to attach to the bottom of the sleeve. You can, like I said, you can put buttons here if you want. Okay. Let's go into Pattern Master Boutique and start designing this. Okay, now we're going into Pattern Master Boutique in order to design. Um, what I'm going to do here is I've got my chart up and I'm going to go into my dresses. Now you're going to need to design two bodice patterns. One with the cl a classic bodice v-neck and set-in sleeves and then you're going to need to do a raglan sleeve and you're going to need to do a little bit of finessing through your full screen option here as well. 
Okay, style. I want to do the raglan first. No closure, actually, we're going to put a side zipper, no closure in the back. And it's going to be waist length, a fitted. And uh, this is a v neck. Go into darts. Let's look over here at our picture. No darts. No darts. We know that the skirt is a gourd skirt and it's an eight panel. Now, when you draft a dress with a gourd skirt, it may look straight up and down like this, or it may have your hip line curves in through here. I will show you how to work with each type. Uh, for me, because I'm a slender person, it's going to draft as a straight down pattern. But what I'm looking for right now is to make sure that the waistline of the raglan bodice is going to fit the same measurement as the waistline of a set-in classic bodice. So here's what I need to do right quick. First, I'm going to pull up a little notepad or something if I can find one. Uh, let's see, let's just get a pencil then piece of paper for myself. I've always got scrap paper laying around. Okay, let's go full screen. First, I want to look at my settings here. Chesties, two and a half. I'm going to make a note of that. Waist is at 70, uh, three quarter. Hip is at two and a half. So I want to go into full screen, and I want to get the measurement of these two, which is 13 and an eighth. Point one two five times two. That's going to be point two five twenty six point two five. So that's how much my waist measurement would be on the raglan. Okay, I've noted that. Let's go back over here and do a classic side zipper, no closure, darts, no darts, no torso darts. Actually, it did have a shoulder dart, I think. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to be overlaying this set-in sleeve here on the front section. And the back right here does not show any kind of a shoulder dart. Here it is right here. No shoulder dart. Okay, so no shoulder dart. And v-neck. Now let's go into full screen. Same ease measurements. And the waist measurement here is the same. Okay, so I could do it this way just fine. Let's go back into the skirt and make it a gourd skirt again and see if it changes at all. No, it did not change. So, this looks pretty good. I can design both of them. Let's go back over here and do the raglan. And it's side zipper, no closure. No darts, no darts, wouldn't have a dart anyway, sleeve, you don't have to worry about changing the sleeve, the only thing you do have to worry about is coming down here and 
adjusting whatever length if you haven't reset it in the uh, design defaults, which apparently I haven't. And sleeve is going to be a tapered. Yes. We are going to put a wing cuff on there, and then I'm going to cuff width, take this as far as I can get it. Is it the wing cuff I want? Not a shirt cuff. Stand out. Stand out. That's what I want. Okay, so take it to a stand out cuff. We're going to draft our gauntlets ourselves. Okay, skirt, gourd. And we want it midi. Go in here with the v-neck. And I want to raise my neckline. Oh, five, that's okay. I'll leave it at that. A pocket. We want a patch pocket here. And I want to go. It's not all that. And does this have a, no, it doesn't have, well, it does have a flap. Okay, there's our pocket skirt we've got as a gourd. Now it does flare a little bit. And we need five is a good flare, but we need the flare depth halfway between the waist and the hemline. So that's going to be about 28, so about 14. And that's going to give me straight into right here, and then it'll flare out there. No details that I need. We've already got our, all of our settings done. This has got a flare to it. It doesn't matter about the hem right now, simply because I'm going to be drafting that in myself. So let's save this. And I'm going to name it FF for French Fashion, 31 for the page number, Raglan. I'm going to go ahead and open it up in Pattern Editor to get it ready. Okay. Now I want to go over here and do a classic side zipper, no closure, no darts, no darts. Set in sleeve with a stand out. And a lot of these are going to be duplicates. The cuff will be a duplicate. We won't need but one of those patterns, but the sleeve will be different. We'll use the raglan sleeve, not this sleeve. OK, uh, what else? What else? V-neck. And that was a five depth, okay. Two and a half, three quarter, two and a half. That's good. Skirt needs to be a gourd. And it needs to be a flared. Five and fourteen. That's good too. All right.
And again, I'm going to name this FF31 space classic. Okay, the next step, I'll be going to Pattern Master Editor and start editing these patterns. And we'll see you in a minute. Okay, I have gone ahead and opened everything up in Pattern Master Editor. And I've also merged in, I've got the raglan sleeve version and the classic bodice version. So I've added that in. Now what's going to be showing? This classic bodice is only the front. All we really need is the front of it. Because the back is still going to have your raglan sleeve and shape that's viewing. So the front is the only one that we need in order to make any alterations on. So what I've done here, I've drug in all my skirt pieces and lined them up front and back. And I've got the classic bodice pieces over here lined up to the raglan bodice. I've also merged in my image with all my notations on it so I can have a visual reference on what I'm going to be doing. Now, we're going to take this guy, the center front, and the center back, and we're going to ungroup those two. This is going to hit at high hip line, so I want to do a locate point LP at 3.75. Same thing over here, and we're locating it from the waistline, 3.75. So now, I'm going to take this line, click it here, and go all the way, hold your control key and go over to the center back, and then another one, hit your space bar to repeat, right click on your point that you made, and go all the way across. Let's go ahead and join those back together as a group. break this. And I'm going to do a quick intersection over here. If it'll let me. There we go. And now I'm going to come down and try and grab these and group it back. Don't need this. Let's group that back. going to need to put the yoke on the classic bodice in the center front. So let's move that up, ungroup it. We're going to locate a point here, 3.75. Take a line across here to here. I want to get in here and put a line from my bus point area straight down, hold your control key, and then what I'm going to do is intersect this to this, and then do another line from here to here and then we can get rid of this. I think I'll just change it to a dotted line for now, just so I can leave it there, because I might end up having to use that location as a notch area. So let's leave it there. Okay, let's take this and group it. Let's go ahead and pull up the back of the classic, and then we're gonna also grab the front and pull them both up a little bit further. And then I'm going to grab the back of the raglan sleeve, ungroup it, do the same thing, locate a point from here to here, 
uh, or three seven three and three quarters from there draw a line straight across now here's where you need to figure out how far let's ungroup that I want to get zoom that line and let's break that line right here so I know how far over it's three and a half over we can go ahead and regroup that and to group and ungroup it's control G to group control U to ungroup okay so we said this was three and a half and this is the back so we're going to locate a point from the center back at three and a half Oops, that was wrong. That was 375. Locate point at three and a half, Lisa. Okay, let's come in here. Line from this point. Control key to hold, make it perfectly straight. 90 degrees, go down to here. <coughs> Another line from here to here and I'm right clicking so let's change this because technically this midpoint here should exactly meet right here let's take this out let's group it back now I want to go ahead and pull him back down and see if I'm pretty close to correct. I'm almost correct. It's only a difference of a little bit less than a half an inch. So that'll be fine. <coughs> So we know we've got that. This is going to lay under. Now one other thing we need to do on this, let's ungroup it. The way that, let's see if I can get over here, here, a slanted placket. It goes from, looks like about an inch in to maybe an inch and a half down. So let's come over here. It's going to come in an inch from here. Let's locate a point right here. One inch. And let's go an inch and a half down here. And then we're going to draw a line. Let's go ahead and make it a pop-up taskbar is annoying the crud out of me. Let's make a line with a dash. I might have gone in too far there. Let's just look and see what it looks like. It does look like, oh no, okay, I see what happened. Let's see what I did. So this is wrong. This is wrong. I think this one is going to be wrong. Let's go back out into here. Okay, from the shoulder. It comes down to the neckline. So let's try that and see what happens. Let's take it down an inch into here maybe just three quarters of an inch and then let's take it down an inch and a he half here which is twice the distance and let's see what this looks like now one thing you can do here let's group it Let's see. Let's look at this angle. That's about right. That 
looks like the right angle here. Okay, so I'm going to use that angle right there. So now what we've got, we've already marked out our back bodice yoke onto the raglan sleeve, the front bodice yoke onto the classic. Your raglan sleeve front you will still use, it's just not going to have your yoke in it. It's just going to be solid underneath the classic with the yoke. The back classic version is going to not even be used. So we could eliminate that altogether. Now let's work on the we're going to work on the skirt. Okay, let's look at the skirt right quick. Now the skirt is just, it doesn't have the V in it that the yoke did right here. It does not have that V in the yoke. But it is cut all together in the center. So what I need to do is to come over here and move this over to here. Get him. Let's get all these guys. Oop, crow. Okay, fine. Oh dear. Okay, let's do this, this, and this them out of my way for a minute. Ah, uh, there. This guy's got to go back over to here. Oh, I've got to do a little bit of finagling here because I messed up. Actually, that's perfect. This has got to go over here. And I'm going to go ahead and group that back. Okay. We need to line all these things up. This goes here. Okay, now this guy has to come down and over. And down. I think I can get rid of these for now simply because I don't think that they're correct. We'll go back in and do them here in a second. And let's get in here. Just done grouping and getting this set up. 
Let's look at this and see if anything's overlapping. I want to get out of the overlap. Okay, this one's still grouped or ungrouped. So let's move him over a little bit. This guy is ungrouped. Let's move him over. Let's move him over just a tad. And I'm doing all of the, because I lined it all up perfectly, I'm holding my control key to move them totally, perfectly straight, either left or right. Okay, so now I can ungroup all of these. And now I'm going to do a line from this point straight across. And I need to change that, maybe, yes. And let's go ahead and change it down here. Okay, let's do some breaking. And some intersections. One thing I found while making this dress is that I have to eliminate, <coughs> pardon me, this flare here at the side, at the center side, because that's, this is going to be the side front, one's going to be the side back. That's the side back, that's the side front, and there's the front. So I have to eliminate this flare here. And what I did was to put a godet in it. I just cut these little triangles out and made separate patterns into the godets. And what I'm going to do again is to go and change this to a dotted line. And I just want to do an indication here on this one and this one. Okay, now this line here and this line here are eliminated. These pieces here get lined up. Actually, we need to do an intersection down here. And here. Okay, so this piece and this piece are all going to line up. Let's group it. And this then lines up over here. Get it straight. Okay, so here is our sides. Your center front and your center back is all cut together and you're going to end up eliminating you're going to end up eliminating all these flares, I think. All right, I've got to take a quick break. I'll be back in just a little bit. See you in a few.